Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, now let me go over some of the necessary machine learning notation and jargon, something that we will be using in this class yeah, over and over again, and that is also commonly used in the machine learning and deep learning communities. So yeah, I'm um, revisiting the term supervised learning. What is supervised learning? It's about learning a function that maps some input x to some output y, where x are the features and y are the targets. So yeah, like uh, you remember from the previous videos, the features, or we also call them observations, they are usually yeah, uh, vectors, or yeah, for example, the flower dimensions, sepal length, sepal width, um, petal length and petal width, or pixels of an image and so forth. Um, by the way, if I uh, write a vector, I would then, if I do or use handwriting, use this a little arrow to denote a vector and I will try to use, if I don't forget, an underscore and a capital letter to refer to a matrix. And uh, x, if I don't use any of this, would be a scalar value. So um, here though, I was just writing x as a scalar, but features in practice can be also vectors. Um, so anyways, we are getting ahead of ourselves here a little bit. So uh, the next term here on this slide is structured data, which we discussed also in the previous video. So the term structured data usually refers to data in the format of yeah, uh, tables. You can also, also think of it as a uh, tabular data it usually comes or in the form of databases, like uh, if you know SQL databases, for example, or if you think of Excel spreadsheets or uh, CSV files, this would be a typical example of a structured data set. Then yeah, unstructured data, this is usually what we refer to as the raw data, for example, images, the pixels in an image, audio signals or text sentences like documents. And um, this is usually something that yeah, deep learning works with. So, and before deep learning, we usually needed extensive feature engineering, as I explained before, where we extracted features from raw data sources. So here on the right-hand side, I just wanted to show you another example of yeah, a raw image input versus um, something that requires feature engineering. So for example, here you have a portrait of an uh, image, and let's say the task is um, face recognition, where you want to match multiple faces. So here I don't have multiple people where we want to compare whether it's the same person or not, so we don't have really face recognition or matching. Uh, however, what I'm illustrating here is that we can extract features from this image. So here, this is uh, a traditional method, using like facial key point extraction, so or extracting so-called face landmarks. And um, this would be a feature engineering step, like simplifying the image such that it only now contains these key points. I think there are around 67 or so key points. So we reduced the complexity of the data set by having a high dimensional data set. So if this is, for example, a 200 by 200 pixel image, um, we would have uh, 40,000 pixels, so 40,000 features, including background and everything. And we, here we just simplified it and only have, I think it's 67 features. I, I could be wrong, you would have to double check. So here, this is actually a function um, uh, I implemented based on a library called dlib, which implements this phase uh, extraction. Uh, here I'm just, yeah, I implemented a Python wrapper function to make it a little bit simpler to use. Any case, so here this would be an example of manual feature engineering, like reducing the complexity of the problem by extracting a smaller number of features from this raw input. Okay, so uh, moving on. So here on this slide are some more yeah, terminology. So a training set, we usually refer to it as D, and a training set comes in, yeah, pairs of these observations, the so-called training examples or features, and the target labels. And um, like I said, I will be using this error notation if I do handwriting to refer to vectors. So in, if I don't do handwriting, like in the slides using the computer font, I will make them bold. And um, yeah, for scalars, I won't use uh, bold font. Then a training data set consists of n training examples, so that's the number of examples in the training set. And I will be using 
the squared bracket notation here as a superscript to refer to the training data points index. So if I write something like um, 10, then this means that's the 10th uh, yeah, training feature uh, feature vector in the training set. So I'm referring to the 10th training example, to the feature vector of the 10th training example. So then uh, in practice, so usually the data set, the training data set comes from some data generating distribution. Something could be a natural physical phenomenon that has yeah, created our data and so forth. So there exists some unknown function that associates our feature vectors with some label. And the goal in machine learning is, yeah, in supervised learning, is to yeah, predict the labels. So how we do that is by um, approximating this unknown function. And yeah, traditionally, this is called the hypothesis. Nowadays, um, I, I think the hypothesis term is a little bit dated. Um, we can just call that model. We don't have to use yeah, fancy terms like hypothesis. We can just call that the machine learning model. Um, so that's like a more yeah, common way to refer to it. So you can think of the machine learning model as a function that approximates, approximates this unknown function. So it will, for example, in the classification example, return a predicted label. So we can write the predicted label as y hat, for example, or we can just call it target, target t, or output o. O is maybe a little bit tricky because it almost looks like a zero, but um, yeah, these are all equivalent notations. So in this way, as H, you can think of it as the machine learning model. Yeah, in classification, again, so we have the model, which um, yeah, is a function that maps some m-dimensional input vector. So this would be our features, mapping those um, yeah, to some targets here. Where the targets in the term uh, in the context of classifications are class labels, so we can have up to k class labels. So usually k is uh, larger or e larger or equal to two. We have at least two classes. In the case of the iris data set that I've shown you earlier, there were actually three possible classes: um, Cetosa, uh, Versicolor, and Reginica, for example. But yeah, um, of course really depends uh, on the data set. There is no limit to the number of classes you can have. Also, yeah, in regression, we have an input vector that is m-dimensional, and we map that to a continuous to real valued uh, number. Yeah, uh, more about the feature vector. So I said before, the feature vector is m-dimensional. So if you think back of the iris example, where we had the sepal length, um, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. So we had four features. And then if I look uh, at the training at, at the index, let's say I focus in on the third training example, I would write it down as um, three and then it's a vector. So it's a third feature vector. So in this case, we have a vector of consisting of four values. So this is what I'm showing you here as a vector representation. Um, so yeah, we have an m-dimensional vector and I will use the subscript notation to refer to the feature index. So if I write something like uh, three here, this would refer to the third, so one, two, three, to the petal length of the third training example. Now in Python, uh, yeah, we start zero indexing. So if we do Python coding, it might be a little bit more complicated because we actually start indexing at zero in contrast to R. So in, in Python notation, this would be actually the uh, fourth training example and the fourth uh, feature like petal width. Yeah, moving on. And now here I have a feature vector again, just as on the previous slide. However, in practice, we usually have multiple feature vectors. So one feature vector per training example. So if you think back of the iris data set where we had up to 150 training examples, let's use the letter N here over the rows to refer yeah, to the training um, data points. And then for each one, we had a feature, let's call that feature one, 
feature two, feature three, and feature four. So we have this table here. So you can also use, let's say, dot, 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 feature M. So um, then each data point, so each observation is a feature vector. So in linear algebra notation, we usually yeah, write a vector as a column. However, we arrange the vector here as like a, a row vector. So a row vector would be referring to one data point as one observation. So we use a transpose on that one to uh, refer to this one here as the first um, yeah, data point in our table. It's a little bit confusing the way I've written it here because now I'm using the subscript. This is just because I have the transpose here and then it's a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit squished. So actually I could have written it as transpose one, for example, it would have been clearer maybe. So maybe ignore this notation. Here on the right hand side, I have the more yeah, extended uh, notation where I'm referring with a superscript to the data point index. So this would be all the first data point here in the first row. And then the subscript refers to the feature index. So if I pick, for example, this case here, this would be, what well, is maybe a bit unfortunate. Let me use this one here. This is the second feature of the nth data point. So this would be if I go right here, this would be this one here. So this uh, scalar value. So usually in machine learning we use a design matrix. I will use bold letters. Uh, and if I hand write this, I, I will try to use an underscore to make sure or to indicate that this is a matrix. Because with handwriting, it can be unclear if I do an X, it's unclear uh, if I don't yeah, denote it further, whether it's a vector or a matrix and so forth. So for, again, for vectors, I will use this notation and for matrices, this notation. And I may forget, but I will try not to. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, just to summarize, this is a structured data set, how it would look like in machine learning. In the first couple of lectures, we will actually be using with structured data before we go into, yeah, uh, working with unstructured data. So in the first couple of lectures, just as a warm up using simpler uh, deep learning related methods like single layer neural networks and then multi-layer neural networks that are fully connected, uh, they will be working with also structured data. And then when we talk about convolutional networks and recurrent neural networks, which are yeah, the real innovations in deep learning, then we will be using unstructured data. All right, so yeah, just to, um, Recap, M is the feature uh, number. So we have up to M features and N is the yeah, uh, number of training examples. So I think the reason why I left it blank here, I wanted to ask you um, that as an exercise. So in that way, um, I already did the exercise for you. So here the rows, I think it was what I was referring to, are our yeah, training examples, where the columns are our oops, features. And this is our class label column. All right, that was not very exciting, <laughs> but yeah, I was just um, summarizing how, how we think of a data set in the context of machine learning. Now, if we have image data, how do we deal with that? How does it fit into our yeah, concept of representing data? So images uh, are actually unstructured data, as I mentioned before, but we can actually convert it into a structured um, data set. And um, if you think of an uh, image like this, this is actually a 28 by 28 image, which should be 784 dimensional. So we have 784 pixels. Pixels are usually in the range between zero and 255. However, here, assume I normalized the data. We will talk more about why uh, data normalization is useful. Uh, I normalized it such that the pixel values are in the range between zero and one. So we have a pixel, uh, like a 700 of these, um, 784 of these pixels here. So you can actually, or 
can see this actually low resolution, we have one pixel here and one pixel here and so forth. So I think, yeah, you know what I mean by pixel. So we can actually uh, use that as input to a traditional machine learning method uh, in terms of thinking of this as a structured data set by concatenating the rows. So we can make a long feature vector out of this image. Because, I mean, this is a matrix, right? So it's like a um, 28 by 28 matrix, but we can convert this into a vector by just concatenating. So take the first row, let's say this first row here, and then we have the second row, and just add it here to the first row, and then third row, adding it here. So and if I keep doing that, I get a very long vector. In fact, a 784 dimensional vector. And that is what I'm showing you here in the center. You may were probably already wondering what these numbers are, and these are the pixel values. So. Uh, the 0, 0.0 refers to yeah, a white pixel. So you can see in the beginning here, the image is all white. So you have all the white uh, 0 0.0s here. And then yeah, you have these um, grayscale and black um, pixels, so which are about here. So we kind of converted this unstructured data set into a feature vector that we can then use with traditional methods. And we will also yeah, be doing that in a context of deep learning using simpler methods like multi-layer perceptrons, fully connected neural networks. So we will start with a simple approach and then build up to it and then later use the unstructured data directly. All right, um, so yeah, like I said before, convolutional ne ne neural networks, which will be a topic yeah, later on in this course. Convolutional neural networks, um, they use the image data directly and usually the format for that is also um, a matrix or more precisely it's actually a three or four dimensional tensor. So here, um, so there are two, two common representations. One is called NCHW. Uh, we will talk more about that later when the time comes, but maybe if you are curious what it stands for, H um, stands for the height, uh, W stands for the width of an image. So we have here the H times W, so this would be a matrix. However, there's usually also a color channel. So C stands for color. Uh, in this case, we don't have color because it's a black and white image. So in this case, it's, uh, so there's a one. So um, actually I'm showing you here the dimensions. So 28 by 28, height times width, and then the color channel. And then usually in deep learning, what we do is we, um, bundle a bunch of images together as input for the neural network. So in, we have something called a batch size. So here I have 128 images where each image is a 3D tensor. So in that way, if I consider all of that, it's a 4D tensor. So in that way, uh, we are representing the data as tensors. And this is why we need some basic um, linear algebra for this course. While uh, I mean, we won't be using fancy things, just simple matrix multiplications and dot products. Um, and I will also talk more about that later. So right now I don't want to go into too much detail because um, yeah, convolutional networks, that is a topic far ahead, a few weeks ahead. So I don't want to talk too much about this here. I have to be honestly a little bit careful with the time because yeah, like you noticed, I always uh, try or I try to avoid it, but I always end up going on tangents and talking about things in too much detail too early, I think. So let me move on then. Yeah, here lastly, uh, machine learning jargon um, part two. So some more terms we will be using. I think this is more like useful as a cheat sheet, like something you can maybe refer to later when uh, certain terms are unclear. So when we say, for example, training a model, that is the same as saying, for example, fitting a model or parameterizing a model or learning from data. Then, yeah, the word training example. It's uh, synonymous to saying, for example, training record or training instance or training sample. However, um, yeah, for example, when I teach uh, other statistics classes, um, I usually use, or often as statisticians, we use the term sample. But I find um, sample can be a little bit ambiguous, especially in the context of deep learning, because if we say training sample, it's not clear really whether we are, we are referring 
to a single uh, training data point or multiple training data points. So for example, when I was writing my Python machine learning book in 2015 in the first edition, I used the term training sample as I remember. I mean, it has been six years ago, but I think I used yeah training sample throughout. And then sometimes I noticed it was a little bit confusing. Do I mean now a single data point or do I mean the training data set as a training sample? So I later also went back and changed everything to uh, saying training example, if I refer to a simple or single training example. And then also in plural, I would say training examples. I think this is a little bit more clear. And this is also something uh, most people in machine learning and deep learning nowadays use. So the term training example. Then yeah, feature. Feature is also synonymous to observation or predictor, variable, independent variable, input, attribute, covariate. So in other statistics classes, we are often using the term, for example, predictor and things like that, or even covariate. So here in machine learning and deep learning, we usually use the term feature. Um, then yeah, we have the term target, which is synonymous to outcome, ground truth, output, response variable, dependent variable, and then a specific context of classification, we also say class label or yeah, just label. So also these are all the same thing. And then yeah, lastly here, output prediction, and this is what the model produces. This is different yeah, from the target. So the target is, we uh, want to predict the target. So this is the ground truth or something that is provided in the data set and the prediction or output is the thing that the model returns and we want to usually match the target. Okay, so this is uh, it for the jargon. In the next um, video, I want to briefly talk about a, a little bit more about the tools that we will be using in this course.